So dear friends, the time that everyone has been waiting for is now. <laughs> By the way guys, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you are a returning subscriber, may God bless you for your love and your support. But if it is your first time here on my channel, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on that notification bell. You will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I promise you, you always enjoy every content that I upload in this channel. So dear friends, in today's video, we are going to be having a story time of part two Janet's story. Guys, if you do not watch my last video, go watch it because it is the part one of this story. So after watching the part one, then come back here and watch part two. You will understand better this story. And I said, this is the moment that everyone has been waiting for because I've been seeing your comments on the comment section. You guys telling me, Bella, when is part two? So guys, this is the moment and we ended in part one when Janet met with Eric at the airport in Nairobi and happened the drama that happened. I repeat guys, go watch part one if you did not watch part one <laughs> of this story. Yeah, so after that drama, then he kept on telling her, oh, why didn't you come here early? Janet was like, I came early, but they told me to go to the wrong international arrivals. I am very sorry. So Janet thought that it had ended there because she apologized. <laughs> and then Eric told her, you're so beautiful, started complimenting her. Oh my God, I'm so proud to be with a beautiful lady like you. You're more beautiful even than the photos and the videos. <laughs> she said, thank you. But guys, Janet tells us after that incident at the airport, kept on feeling nervous and uncomfortable. And guys, I can try to put myself in her shoes. I totally understand her after all that drama. And it is day one meeting that guy <laughs> who wouldn't have felt like that. So time to board came and they flew to Diani Beach to begin their three weeks vacation there. So when they reached to the hotel room, Eric started being like, oh my God, I've waited for so long. I'm so horny. I can't wait to have them the goodies. <laughs> so Janet was like, I understand, but for me on my side, I am not comfortable yet. Why can't we go out, you know, do some shopping, spend some time together so that I can get used to be around you, so that I can be comfortable around you. Then at night, we're going to be having them the goodies. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Eric? So Eric was like, I think it's okay. It's good. Let us go for shopping. So they headed out, went for shopping, bought wine, snacks, everything that they needed. And after shopping, returned back <laughs> to the hotel. But before I tell you what happened after returning back to the hotel, I totally agree with Janet, not wanting to give the goodies immediately <laughs> after arriving at the hotel. Because as a normal woman, it is impossible to throw yourself in bed with a stranger. Because at that time, Eric was still a stranger. <laughs> They've spent few hours together. She doesn't know him, you know. So how can you make love to such kind of a guy? Wanted some more time. Unless it's your business. <laughs> then you can throw yourself in bed with him and give him the goodies. <laughs> yeah. So after returning back to the hotel from shopping, <laughs> Eric went, took shower, and after having shower, he sat on the bed and was like, Janet, I cannot wait till night. <laughs> I've waited for so long, five months and a half. That's a lot of time. I want them goodies now. <laughs> so Janet had no option, you know. She had to give in the goodies. 
<laughs> yeah, so they enjoyed the goodies and tells us, but it did not last all that long. So after enjoying the goodies, went to the beach for sunbathe, relax, all was good. So guys, yes, all was good, but Janet inside kept on feeling so anxious and uncomfortable told herself maybe it's because it is the first day and all the drama that happened at the airport that's why i'm feeling like this let me wait and see how it goes so that day ended just like that and then the second day came so guys the next day came and they went to the beach for sunbathing as they were there it was a time of the day when the tides are high in the ocean so erica was like you know what honey i like swimming when there is high tides in the ocean why can't we go and swim and you know salty water is good for your health <laughs> it's so healthy for you janet told him i don't know how to swim he told her don't worry my love i'm going to teach you how to swim i've got a diving license you are safe with me you know i'm going to stay there with you in the water holding you until you master how to swim. So there is no need for you to get scared. And after Janet hearing all that, being assured she's going to be safe, he gained her trust and was like, okay, let's go in the water. <laughs> so entering in the ocean, there was a high tide. He told her, when you see a high tide coming, jump so that it does not take you down. <laughs> And Janice was like, okay. So whenever she could see a tide coming, she could jump. But remember, Eric was by her side. It kept on like that. And after a short period of time, Eric was like, now I want to go and swim. Let us go and swim. And the place that he was telling her to go swim, it was even more deeper than where she was standing. Tells us the water was reaching her here. So she said, no, I cannot go and swim with you there. Remember, I still don't know how to swim. And I think I'm going to get out of the water if you're going to leave me here alone. I'm not comfortable. He told her, okay, if you're still not comfortable, I'm going to stay here with you until you get comfortable. Then I will go swimming. So she was there learning how to swim and Eric is by her side. But to turn like this, Eric disappeared, <laughs> nowhere to be seen, and the high tide came. So when the high tide came, she jumped, but still it took her down. She almost drowned, guys. She drank lots of water. She was panicking. Everyone was looking at her. And when Eric came to take her out of the water, was laughing at her. Like you're like a child. You shouldn't panic. When you panic, that's when you drown. But with Janet, it wasn't a joke. She saw death. Oh my God, was so, so scared, went out of the water, crying, returned back to the hotel. But do you know what? Eric never followed her. So when she arrived in the hotel room, went to the bathroom and locked herself there, was in a shock, kept on crying, and it took Eric like an hour to return back. When he returned back to the hotel room, realized that Janet was in the bathroom crying. So he knocked on the door and was like, honey, can I come in? Janet refused, stayed there until she calmed down, took shower and went to the balcony. As she went to the balcony, Eric followed her and she told Eric, why did you leave me alone in the water? I told you I don't know how to swim. Eric was like, I'm so sorry, honey. I thought you had mastered to swim. <laughs> oh my God, this guy. But anyways, Janet forgave him and he started complimenting her. How beautiful she looks. I love you so much. Honey, I don't deserve you. He was sweet, 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 sweet. And then Janet's sisters called to ask her, how is it going? She was like, everything is fine. I'm so happy, you know, now I feel comfortable around him. But guys, Janet tells us, notice that Eric could get angry even at a small thing. Like one day they were in the kitchen and then mistakenly stepped on him. Oh my God. He started telling her, you never pay attention to where you're looking at. Then Janet was like, when? <laughs> he just met me. <laughs> oh my 
god so it kept on like that and janet felt devaluated and i know you guys you want to know if eric brought some gifts for janet from norway yes he brought two expensive perfumes for her <laughs> yeah so yes he could get angry he could you know devaluate her but then return become sweet compliments her make her feel very very special and that's when janet could get confused <laughs> you know <laughs> you get angry and you're like i'm leaving him i'll never marry this guy but then he turns and becomes the sweetest guy the guy you were dreaming you know to have <laughs> But if you're here or watching this, when you find yourself in such kind of a situation, get out of it immediately because that guy will never change. If you see him now, he is bad, he's doing things that are making you feel frustrated, <laughs> it will reach a point you start getting nightmares. <laughs> It will get worse. It won't get better. But for Janet, I know some of you who watched part one were like, oh my God, the guy is full of red flags. Yes, Janet saw some red flags, but was telling herself, maybe it is because it is the first time for us to be together. We are from different countries, different continents. We have got different cultures and traditions so maybe it is okay for him to behave this way but as we continue things gonna change so yes guys they kept on enjoying good times together though it wasn't good all the time like i explained then came 14th of february which was valentine's so when janet woke up was like happy valentine's my love and then eric pretended oh my god today is valentine's <laughs> he responded happy valentine's my love and from there he became overly sweet <laughs> towards janet he was like what is going on then she asked him where are we going to be having dinner tonight he was like don't worry about that we are not going to make any reservations we are going to one of the five stars hotels <laughs> to have some dinner you know enjoy the day make it special i want to spoil you today so we are going to be having sushi champagne you know told her a bit of how he is planning the dinner to go so the time for dinner came they called tuk 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 came took them to the hotel restaurant where they were going to eat their romantic dinner on that valentine's day so when they arrived the tuk tuk guy asked them if they're going to call him to take them back to their hotel they were like we will see if it is not too late we are going to call you so they went towards the gate arriving at the gate you cannot enter if your name is not on the list you know <laughs> if you did not make reservations so they started looking at the list and this guy had made reservations but did not want to tell janet maybe he had planned something special <laughs> on that day yeah so they checked in the names and his name was not there guys he got super angry started telling janet they've decided to ruin the day they've ruined our dinner but they told him to calm down they're going to look for the table for them and eventually yes they looked for the table and then they went in they ate sushi all was good champagne janet really enjoyed that dinner so time to return back home came <laughs> and what they did because it was late waiting for so long to call that tuk tuk guy that brought them it was not going to happen so they decided to take any tuk tuk that was passing by so as they were entering the tuk tuk the tuk tuk guy that brought them 
had arrived i started telling the other tuk tuk guy these are my clients <laughs> where are you taking them but we told you maybe it's not i told you you are going to come and take us now you see we have got another tuk tuk so you enter inside you'll find lots of clients you know to take it's not a problem but it's like the tuk tuk guy was drunk and because this tuk tuk guy was drunk followed them and then started knocking them you know wanting to fight so when eric saw that he got super angry <laughs> wanted to open the tuk-tuk and go fight so started telling the other tuk-tuk guy that was knocking them do you know who the f i am i'm gonna fucking kill you oh my god the threats <laughs> started i will fucking kill you i'm gonna kill you don't know who I am. Don't mess with me. <laughs> but fortunately, the tuk-tuk was not opening for Eric to go out and go fight the tuk-tuk guy. And the tuk-tuk guy drove very fast. That drama ended like that. But Janet was super embarrassed of all that and hearing the death threats. So arriving at their hotel, you know Janet is still traumatized of all that happened. So I was like, let me go freshen up, you know, then dress up sexy in a silky dress, then go to the balcony to get the ocean breeze. So as she was going to change, <laughs> Eric was like, no, you look so beautiful tonight. Do not change the outfit. <laughs> come sit here and then Jerry was like okay so this guy wants to fight maybe again <laughs> wants to talk of what happened with the tuk-tuk guy but that was not the case because she saw eric knelt down with an engagement ring like this oh my god <laughs> she was so happy but eric never said you know any vows maybe would you marry me nothing like that he let him put a ring on her finger then hugged him so tightly kissed him and he was like that means you're my wife she said yes your fiance <laughs> yeah she was happy but not fully happy why is that i'm gonna tell you in a minute so the reason why she was not all that fully happy with that engagement is because of all the drama that had happened before but mainly it's because it was not her dream engagement because her dream engagement was maybe having someone to take beautiful pictures of them romantic maybe at the beach you know <laughs> yeah such kind of a moment a moment to always remember but it did not happen that way and thirdly is that before eric comes when he was still in norway they had talked of her dream engagement ring and she sent a picture of that dream engagement ring when she sent the picture eric was like remember i told you i'm not a millionaire <laughs> but Janet tells us that dream engagement ring was the same engagement ring that her brother engaged her girlfriend and had bought that engagement ring at a hundred thousand Kenyan shillings. So she was like, this is in Norway and then can't buy my dream ring. This is strange. <laughs> but anyways, he can buy something similar, which is maybe half price of that. But the ring that Eric bought was totally different <laughs> from Janet's dream ring. But anyways, she was like, okay, no problem. It was a white gold with a small diamond on it. And another thing with that ring, it was a little bit bigger. So Janet could wear that ring on a wrong finger. I remember I posted her photo on my Instagram stories, you know, congratulating her on her engagement. Guys, I didn't know all this that I'm telling you. <laughs> I came to know all this in details after asking her to share this story with you. So I was in the dark. The picture that I had of Eric is that sweet, loving guy that sent her money for the rent, sent her money for her business, and came with good intentions, now engaged her. 
So when I posted the photo on my Instagram, I remember there is a lady who told me, Bella, congratulations to the lady, but the ring, she's wearing it on a wrong finger. I never cared, you know, to ask Janet about that. But when she told me the story, it was like, I was wearing it on a wrong finger cause it was a little bit bigger. So friends, Janet tells us after the engagement, that is when the drama begins <laughs> yes because the following day after the engagement janet was like this man is serious and i think it is time to tell my parents about this guy that i am engaged so decided to call her sister-in-law and was like i'm freaking out <laughs> i just got engaged i don't know how my dad will react about this then after calling the sister-in-law told her i think i'll call mom first because my mom can be sweet cool understanding and i know after talking to mom making sure she is on my side then i'm going to tell paps so it was in the evening and janet decides to call her mom she calls her mom and is like mom i want to tell you something the mother is like what <laughs> then she tells the mom i just got engaged i met this guy online he came to see me and now we are engaged the mother laughed and was like you're lying <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why the mother thought she is lying is because Janet always tell her parents that she's going to get married when she is 27, 28 after finishing her master's. <laughs> yeah, so the mom is like, are you serious? She's like, yes, I'm serious. I just got engaged. Then the mother asked, how old is he? She's like, he is 46. Is he divorced? She's like, no, never married. He has kids. She was like, yes, she has got two kids with the ex-girlfriend. What is the relationship between the baby mama and him? How does he talk about the baby mama? Then Janet was like, to be honest, he talks badly about the baby mama. Even sometimes calls her a bitch and says she is a bad parent. But never opened up to tell me what really happened. And the mother asks her, how long have you been dating? She's like, five months and a half. And now you're engaged? She's like, yes. So Janet's mother tells her, I am half happy for you because I never imagined a life like that for you because I always imagined bigger things for you. Then Janet asks her mother, what do you mean, mom? Her mother tells her, I have got a bad feeling, but as long as you're happy, it's okay. Then she adds, take your time. To get to know him because you have just met after five months and a half of communicating online and how do you feel so at that time janet had to lie to her mother <laughs> and was like i feel so good around him he's so sweet he's such a good man <laughs> then the mother was like okay be careful so have you told your dad no i have not talked to dad yet I just wanted to first talk to you and right now after telling you I feel overwhelmed I can't tell him today because the mother asked her are you going to tell him today she was like no not today but tomorrow I'm going to call him and explain everything for him so the mother ended the call and on her mother's side it was done now she was really really scared to tell her dad the next day and because it was in the evening they were preparing to go for dinner had to put her phone on silent mode <laughs> so after preparing went for dinner they ate and then that is when janet took her phone from the bag to check she found loads of missed calls from her dad her dad was like what 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 is this your mother is trying to tell me where are you are you even in nairobi i'm trying to call you you're not picking the call pick the call so janet couldn't call the father back because was still at the restaurant taking her dinner sent a message to her dad was like dad don't worry i am going to call you tomorrow morning and you can ask me any questions that you want to ask me and i will explain everything so at that time eric started asking janet honey is everything okay what did your parents say <laughs> 
So Janet had to lie to Eric because she knew <laughs> explaining everything that was going on, <laughs> he was not going to understand and he could have even <laughs> added stress on her so she had to lie to him that oh our parents are very happy and so excited for us <laughs> so guys the next day comes and drama continues yes decided to call her dad before he goes to work because her dad goes to work 10 a.m in the morning so called her dad at 8 a.m in the morning they stayed on the phone for the whole one hour but tells us for that one hour her dad never gave her even one minute to explain of what is going on never he was super angry said so many mean things to her told her janet why have you decided to get married to such an old guy i've given you everything you never lack i've taken you to good schools what is the problem? Janet was like, dad, it's not about money. I love him. He's such a good guy. But the father did not understand at all. Was like, this is why you refuse to go to the UK to study. Janet was like, dad, I'll still go do my master's. It's not a problem. But I love this guy. The dad did not understand her at all and ended the call. After ending a call, sent her a message. I'm going to be putting that message here so that you all can read it. How Janet's dad was very, very disappointed in her. So guys, that day ended like that and the following day, the dad again called and was like, Janet, I'm going to send you a flight ticket to Nairobi, return back to Nairobi. I'm going to give you 1 million to put in your business. I'm going to take you on vacation if vacation is the problem, but I want you to leave that man immediately. Even her mom called her and was like, I feel so uneasy. I had a very bad dream. You were so uncomfortable. I see you dead. A very horrible, horrible dream. Then the dad told her, if you're not going to leave that man, I'm not going to pay your rent and I'm going to disown you. Also, the dad added that I don't want you to bring that man to my home. I've worked so hard to give my kids good life, to give them everything. But if you have decided to get married to that old man, then let him take care of you. So at that time, Janet was really, really frustrated, very, very depressed, cause could remember the $150 that he asked from Eric and what Eric told her then was like, if my dad disowns me, will this guy even take care of me? So after that, the dad never wanted to talk to Janet again. Her sister-in-law called and was like, your dad is so sick, is so depressed, and does not talk to anyone. Even the mother told her about that. Was like, your father has changed completely. He's really, really sad. And the brother called and was like, Janet, dad is very sick. Please try to call him and talk because Janet tells us she's so close to her dad so that whole situation of Janet being engaged to Eric hit him so badly Janet tried to talk to her dad but her dad never wanted to talk to her could tell her I am busy I am busy I am busy and she knew he was not even busy but couldn't do anything her mother could do lots of efforts to call Janet, write to her, and be constantly there for her. So guys, with all that stress that Janet was going through, then one evening they go for dinner with Eric. Then Eric starts asking her, am I causing problems between you and your dad? If yes, just tell me so that I can pack my things and return to Norway because I came here with good intentions and I don't want to cause problems between you and your dad. Janet was like, wow. Instead of this man telling me, honey, don't worry. If I'm causing problems, I want to talk to your dad and assure him I love you. I'm here with serious intentions. I'm not here to take advantage of you. But the last thing he is thinking is packing his bags and return to Norway. Wow, wow, wow. So friends, back to me and Janet. So I told you 
I knew Janet was dating a Norwegian guy by the name of Eric, but I didn't know the whole story. And when she got engaged, of course, she told me, Bella, I got engaged and I was really, really happy. Like I told you, for me, the picture I had of Eric was of that good guy, a serious guy. I didn't know things were ground. <laughs> how they were. <laughs> Qua ground things were different. So Janet comes to me and is like, Bella, I'm so stressed. I don't know what to do because my dad is against our relationship. I asked Janet some few questions. How does he treat you? How do you feel around him? <laughs> do you love him? You know, are you happy? Such kind of questions. I'm going to be putting them here so that you can see even what she responded, guys. So after responding to me, of course, I was on her side, not her parents' side. Because she was happy, she was so in love, he treats her good. <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I knew, guys. <laughs> yeah. So yes, guys, Janet tells us decided to choose Eric over her parents. And yes, those good days, they could really enjoy so, so much. He could take care of him because he is her man. <laughs> yeah, so could do massage on him. And sometimes he could complain he has got uh, problems with the legs, the back is paining. So she could really do that good massage on him. And Eric could be so happy, be like, I'm so glad to have a sweet woman like you. So romantic. You take care of me. I don't even deserve you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was praising her. So guys, before they returned to Nairobi, Janet tells us had to pay for her CPA exams and talk to Eric, but Eric never offered. The only option that remained was to talk to the dad to help her out. <laughs> so she called and called and called. The dad was ignoring her, eventually took her call and told the dad, please help me pay for my CPA exams. The dad was like, can't that guy pay for your CPA exams that are so important to you? And also the dad added, does he even do anything for you? Oh my God. But eventually the dad paid for her CPA exams. But at that time she started thinking what will be her life after Eric leaves Kenya. Cause it was just one year after her graduating from the university and was still depending on her dad. It's her dad that was paying the rent. Yes, she was doing business, but still it's a new business whereby you can't depend on the business for everything to run your life. So she was like, oh my God, if my dad disowns me, I don't know what will be of my life. Cause this man, I can never depend on him for anything. So one day tells her, I want to take you out for lunch, treat you, because most of the time, just to eat lunch at the hotel, maybe fix something, you know, in the kitchen. In the evening, they could go to the restaurant to eat. But that day, Eric was like, no, today I want to treat you for a lunch date. <laughs> and she was really, really happy. Then Eric prepared. And after Eric is done, she prepared. So as she was preparing, her mother calls. Picking the call, her mother is crying, is panicking, telling her that Joel has been taken to the hospital. The other twin that remained. Remember, they had lost one of the twin in December 2022. So the mother was really, really scared that they might lose even the other twin that remained. So Janet too started panicking, was so scared, but tried her best to calm down her mom, tell her don't worry, he's gonna be fine. So they took something like 15 minutes talking, trying to comfort each other. So as she was going downstairs, saw Eric coming, running, and is like, where the f have you been? I've been here waiting for you. This is the fucking second time, fucking second time. You don't respect me. You don't respect time. You make me wait. And she was like, I thought the airport thing, we ended that. I apologized. I'm very sorry and stop shouting. People are looking at you. I was on the phone with mom because Joel is very sick. He's been taken to the hospital. Then Eric is like, I don't give a 
talking shit about that. You could have told your mom you're heading out for lunch to call you after lunch, then making me wait. Oh my goodness. Janet was like, this guy is incapable even of putting himself in my shoes. How can you say something like that? So they went out, they had lunch, they returned, he was not talking, went to the beach, not talking, quiet. <laughs> then dinner time came, he went, took a shower, prepared, then was like, I'm ready, looking good, I'm going out for dinner. Janet was like, okay. So he went and stayed there for some minutes, then returned, told Janet, do you want to join me for dinner? <laughs> Janet laughed and knew that he returned back to take her because she's the one that had M-Pesa money <laughs> to call the tuk-tuk, then go for dinner. She was like, yes, I want to join you. Give me some minutes. I prepare. So she prepared and then they went for dinner. So as they were heading out for dinner, then Eric started saying, maybe this was a mistake. I am so stupid. Janet asked him, what do you mean? What have I done to you for you to talk like that? Am I not allowed to have emotions? I told you I was on the phone and we are worried. Joel, my nephew, has been taken to the hospital. So what is the problem? He didn't answer anything, was busy on his phone. And Janet started thinking, I've decided to choose this guy over my parents. I'm not in good terms with my father, even with my brother, because I'm causing stress to my dad but this guy cannot even see that and right now he's saying maybe it's a mistake to be with me maybe he's so stupid so that one really pained her so much and she got emotional and started crying while at the dinner table so when eric saw that that's when he came honey what is going on how is joel how is he doing i'm so sorry and tried to calm her down then started you know giving her compliments how he loves her and all that so they ate and then returned back to the hotel slept because in the morning they were supposed to take their flight back to nairobi because three weeks were over so in nairobi for that one week they had to go stay at janet's apartment and being there all was good and even got a time to meet her friends <laughs> yeah so when she took eric to her friends oh my god he was trying so hard to be liked by her friends and even went on his knee and asked Janet again to marry her. <laughs> then started telling her friends how he is so much in love with her, how he's going to take her to school, how he's going to give her good life in Norway. And the friends were like, oh my God, wow. <laughs> Janet, you're so lucky. Oh my God. Yeah. You can choose this guy over your parents. Please, please choose your happiness. Oh wow. The way he looks at you. He's so much in love with you, Janet. <laughs> These are their friends. But Janet inside tells us knew exactly this guy is trying to pretend in front of her friends. Cause he could even do that when they were in the coast, you know, be nice to people, smile. And then when they get inside, he's totally a different guy. <laughs> yeah. So the friends were really, really impressed. Like, and they were like, you're such a lucky girl. <laughs> So guys, after meeting the friends, then Erica's like, I want to invite you to Norway. And the time that I want you to come is May 2023 so that you can meet the girls and, you know, you get to see my life. And it was really happy because at that time, all that had happened she was thinking maybe it's because it is the first time the second time i know it's gonna be better because we already know each other and we are used to each other and yes they went to the embassy they gave them the list of the things that were needed she started preparing and eric returned back to Norway. After reaching there, sent her all the documents that were needed for her to be granted the visa to go to Norway. He also sent her $700 for her preparations. So after all the documents were ready, she presented them to the embassy 
and they gave her the date to return to the embassy, you know, <laughs> to take her visa. So from that time, started making shopping of everything that she needs, the suitcases, because she needed more bigger suitcases, you know, buy hair products, skincare products, the wigs, everything, guys. Even that $700 couldn't be enough. She had to add in her money, but that was okay. So she was super, super excited. It was like, wow, I can't wait to meet him again. So guys, Eric returned to Norway in March, and then May, Janet was supposed to go to Norway. So guys, April came, and it is her birthday. So tells us, on her birthday, decided to treat herself, take herself out and her best friend, you know, to this beautiful, expensive restaurant. It's expensive, but affordable. <laughs> the name of the restaurant is called Bambino. It's an Italian restaurant because Bambino is an Italian word. Yeah. So goes to this restaurant looking beautiful with her best friend eat dinner, enjoy, take lots of photos. <laughs> and at the time she was there at the restaurant was chatting with Eric. Was like, wow, that restaurant is really beautiful. What is the name of the restaurant? And then Janet tells him it's called Bambino. And he starts telling her, I hope men are not talking to you. <laughs> I hope no man will take you away from me. Then Janet tells him, no, you're my fiancé. No man is going to take me away from you. I love you. <laughs> so he was happy and asked for the location. She sent the location. Because they could send each other's locations. You know, they're in a long distance relationship. So the birthday dinner ends and then she goes back. So reaching home, then Eric starts telling her, I've bought lots of things for you. I've bought you a very special gift. When you come, you will find it here. Then Janet is like, what is that gift? I was like, no, honey, <laughs> you will find it here. It's a secret, something special. She was like, okay, my love, I'm looking forward to that. And the girls too cannot wait to see you. Because one of her daughters had a birthday in June. So they are waiting for Janet to attend her birthday party. So he tells her, when you come to Norway, I'm going to take you to this beautiful restaurant on a romantic dinner. I'm going to spoil you, my love. Oh my God, give her lots, lots of promises. <laughs> yeah, so the next day, he starts asking Janet any news from the embassy. Janet was like, no, not yet. So he was so impatient and decided to call. When he called the embassy, they told him you have to wait 30 to 45 days. Oh my God, he couldn't wait and he could track where the process has reached because due to the job that he was doing it was easy for him to get all those information but after three days of calling the embassy they sent janet an email to go to the embassy to take her passport she went to the embassy took her passport arriving home opening the passport finds that she was denied the visa to go to Norway. Reasons, they said, they were not sure if Janet was going to return back to Kenya. Also, the proof of their relationship. They did not see enough proofs, like the hotel where they stayed when Eric was in Kenya and also put only one photo of themselves, whereby they needed lots of photos to confirm about their engagement. So after Janet seeing that she was denied the visa, had to call Eric and give him the news. She was crying, even daughters were crying so much cause they were really waiting for her. But Eric told her, my love, you don't need to cry. Cause anyways, I had a plan B of coming to see you in Kenya, July this year. So there is no need for you to cry. Just be positive, be happy. Cause I will be coming to see you. I don't care how many times I'll have to come to Kenya so that I can prove that we are in a relationship. Then they give you the visa. I love you. I want to be with you. And I don't care even which part of the world. 
wow as a woman you say wow i'm so happy to have a man like this <laughs> right <laughs> let me know in the comment section below <laughs> Guys, in that plan too of her going to Norway, they had planned to get married in Norway, May, when she goes to visit. So but after Janet being denied the visa, they shifted their plans to Eric going to Kenya. And that's when he started promising again, my love, this time it's going to be special. Everything is going to be different. <laughs> You can choose any five stars hotel that you want me to take you. I will take you there. We will go to the coast, go for safari, then go to Nairobi in the countryside. Just for you, my love. Also, with my health right now, I'm good. We're going to be enjoying more the goodies. <laughs> Because I won't be stressed which part of the body is paining me. Now I am okay because in February he could complain about his back. But this time he tells her I am fit for the goodies. <laughs> Oh my god. So all was good and Janet could tell him I'm looking forward to that honey. So guys, they kept on communicating and in mid-June, Eric asks Janet, what do you need? So Janet started telling him the things that she needs to buy, you know, for their trip, like sunscreens, lotions, but again told him that had a problem with her contraceptive plan, so wanted to go and see her gyna cause was bleeding due to that told him i would like to also go see my guy now and see what she's going to advise me on this and that only costs 150 dollars plus the things that i've told you i need to buy so eric is like no problem don't worry i'm gonna think about it so two weeks before Eric goes to Kenya, Janet decides to just remind him. Remember, he is the one that asked before that he wants to send something. <laughs> so Janet tells him, I'm reminding you about the money you told me to do the shopping and also go see my guy now. <laughs> so that if it is possible, they take this contraceptive out. It is causing me problems and I need to do it now before you come. So he asks her how much in total and then Janet tells him $700. Oh my god. The guy starts again being angry. Do you think I've planted a money tree here? Do you think I make money in my basement? What is wrong with you African people? You think here in Europe we make money so easily. Then Janet was like, what? Did I miss something? I was just trying to remind this guy. <laughs> Where is this all coming from? Janet tells you the guy complained and complained. Kukaumana. <laughs> <laughs> Those who speak Swahili, you will understand. <laughs> he started counting down the things that he has done for her. I've bought you an expensive diamond ring. <laughs> I've sent you money for the visa, money to do your shopping, money for the rent, money for your business. I don't have any money now. If you can wait, you wait till I get my salary. Because where the f think I'm going to get money now? Oh my God. And it's never wanted to fight. It was like, it's okay. And he said, I will give you the money when I come. Janet told him, when you come, that money won't be useful. As I told you, I had wanted to go see the guy now. So they ended the call and he gave her again a silent treatment. But Janet this time never wanted go kumbembeleza or anything. No, was like, I'm done doing all these stupid things, running after a man. If he wants me, he will communicate with me. So she kept quiet and some days passed before they talked again. So when he returned, came with a different plan. <laughs> He was like, I think this time we need to be just spontaneous, not book any hotel. I will come and we'll spend a weekend at your place, you know, after waiting for four months without seeing each other. So we'll just stay in bed, cuddle, kiss, you know, relaxing. And then you make a homemade dinner, make it romantic. So we will go to the hotel on Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> Janet was like, it's okay that my sister will be sitting 
for her exams and she will be staying here so do not rely on that plan until we get her timetable to get to know the date that she will be sitting for her exams then he was like it's okay no problem so after that she had to talk to the sister and luckily they got the timetable but the days that eric was going to kenya wanted to stay at her place it was same same days that her sister will be at her house you know to sit for her exams so had to call eric immediately he wasn't picking sent him a message it was like eric you cannot stay at my place because my sister will be here on these dates so he received the message but never said anything and after three days when they were talking on a video call again he started like you know fantasizing how they're going to be enjoying at her place when he comes <laughs> janet had to remind him again that we are not staying at my place because my sister will be here so after telling him no again he got so angry was like i'm going to cancel everything you have ruined the vacation where the f do you think i'm going to get money now to book for the hotel in this short period of time and i'm so busy at work oh my god he complicated everything and that day was on friday whereby he's supposed to go to kenya on sunday so when the call ended he kept quiet gave her again a silent treatment so with janet didn't know if eric will go to kenya or not but told her sister that if this guy does not come after four months of waiting to see him it will be the end of our relationship if he cancels this trip just because he cannot stay at my place so janet was there and sure doesn't know if the plan is going on or not then saturday comes goes out with her sister she did a little bit of shopping and was wondering if she should go to the saloon do her hair or not if she should go to the saloon do her hair or not and on eric's side he was quiet completely quiet so at around 11 at night janet was like no i have to talk to this guy on a video call to understand if he is coming or not then eric responds that in two minutes i'll be taking off coming to kenya so she's like you're coming he says yes just like we had planned nothing has changed then she asks him where are you going to stay then tells her maybe you think of that then she's like who is going to pick you at the airport <laughs> tells her i can take care of myself but it will be nice if my wife comes to pick me up <laughs> janet was like i've never met such kind of a person in my life went in the bathroom started crying a lot and her sister was like no you shouldn't cry take this the positive way then her friend was like maybe it's a surprise she was like what kind of a surprise but had no choice started making her hair that saturday night never slept because she knows how to braid her hair so had to braid her hair pack everything her sister could encourage her you just go take it positively go enjoy the vacation <laughs> yeah and yes in the morning goes to the airport to pick eric. eric arriving at the airport it's like nothing happened the guy is smiling he's telling her oh my god you're so beautiful i even forgot how beautiful you are in person <laughs> i can't wait to have them be good <laughs> when we reach the hotel because eventually they decided they will go to the hotel <laughs> Janice was like, I don't know what is going on in his head because someone doing all this and doesn't even apologize of all that is like, got punished for not wanting me to come to your place. So it's okay. <laughs> so they decided to go to this five-star hotel in Nairobi. So guys, arriving at the hotel, then he tells her for three weeks, they're going to be watching sports. There are these bikers from all around Europe who will be riding their bicycles 
across France. So they will be watching that every single day from 11 to 7 p.m. and tells her it is interesting, you're gonna like it so so much. Then she's like, okay, but doesn't like sports at all. <laughs> at that time, hard to pretend. So time for the sports comes and then he sits down to watch the sports but the internet was really really bad <laughs> it wasn't good at all and that's when janet realized that the guy is also a racist he started talking very bad in a racist way about kenya and africa in general he was like what if this is 21st century and you can't have good internet i'm paying lots of money to stay here and i can't watch my sports because the internet is so shit so janet again started feeling bad anxious uncomfortable like the way she could feel in february and this time tells us so a totally different man because i think he was tired of wearing his mask so he had to take his mask down and show janet who he really is. So the second day they did not fight because of the internet, nothing. They had a very good day, stayed in bed, put some mask, did massage to each other, and then went on a spa day. All was super, super good that day. So time for dinner came and he told her he's taking her to this beautiful restaurant. It's called Makado. So they prepared and they headed for dinner. So Makado is next to Bambino. If you guys remember Bambino restaurant where she went for her birthday with her best friend. Friend. So as they were passing Bambino, she had to tell Eric, by the way, honey, that is the restaurant where I went for my birthday. Then Eric is like, why didn't you tell me we go there? She tells him, I didn't tell you because you had already made the reservations at Mercado. Then he starts telling her, you never ask me anything, you just assume. Then Janet was like, if you want to go and check it out, let's go. <laughs> and he said yes yes i want to go and check it out so they went reaching at the door you know they greet them and ask them if they had made a reservation they said no they did not so they looked for a table for them and told them to go sit at that time janet is telling us was looking really beautiful in swahili it tells us ni mengara like everyone is looking at how beautiful she looks and he was so proud you know holding her hand <laughs> so they went they sat down and then he looks at her and is like i'm so proud to have a young very beautiful wife like you my love oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Janet was so happy and said, thanks, babe. <laughs> then the menu comes. Afro <laughs> cinema. So he takes the menu, looks at it, looks at Janet, and then slams the menu. He's like, what the fuck? Do you think I'm here to spend a fortune? Then stands up and is like, you can follow me if you want. Guys, everyone was looking at them. Of course, she's a young lady with an old white man. Oh my God. And the way they were looking at her, it's like they were feeling sorry for her. For all that happened, you know, people pay attention. So she felt very, very embarrassed and tells us that was the most embarrassing day of her life. So she stayed there and, and then the guy who ushered them in when they were coming came to her, tried to talk to her. She was like, it's okay, no problem. Then the guy told her, by the way, you look so beautiful. She said, thank you, and then left. When she went to the elevator, tells us hard balancing tears, thinking that this is the same restaurant I came with my friend on my birthday i paid for four course meals for me and my best friend then i'm here with this old white man who is my fiance is slamming the menu telling me that do you think i'm here to spend a fortune follow me if you want oh my god she was really 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 sad very very sad guys but i'm telling you guys janet has got the patience if i was janet with my crazy head <laughs> that was the last day for that stupid guy to see me 
really. I was going to leave him without even telling him anything. Trust me, guys. So, guys, then it tells us, yes, she knew Bambino restaurant is expensive, but never thought he could react that way because he's the one who asked to be taken there. And it's not all that expensive that someone cannot afford. Wine prices ranges from 5,000 Kenyan shillings to 6,000 Kenyan shillings. And even when she talked to her sister about all that happened, her sister was shocked. So from there, they had to go to the original restaurant that they had wanted to go, Makado. So at Makado, they ate, but they were not talking. Janet was super angry, still in a shock. And after they finished eating at Makado, they returned back to the hotel. So arriving at the hotel, all that Janet wanted to do was to sleep because we're supposed to wake up early in the morning, then take the flight to the coast to Diani. He looks at her, he's like, are you okay? <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Janet was like, oh my God, this guy never understand his actions and how they affect me. Imagine asking her, are you okay? After all the embarrassment he caused her at Bambino restaurant. So she was like, yes, I'm okay. Never wanted to bring it out again because she knew they were going to start fighting. So that day ended and the next day they took their flight to Diani. And the hotel that they were staying is called Diani Reef. So guys, their stay in Diani was only one week. So arrived at the hotel, all was good, but he could always complain. Even one day went and asked her, do I complain a lot? She was like, yes, you complain a lot and to wrong people because those are just employees that you are shouting at. They are not the managers. He was like, mm, maybe you are right. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and could cause trouble to the waiters. Even they were shifted from their room to another room one day before they left. Due to that, all the time he could be like, this is not a five-star hotel treatment. I've been to so many places in the world. I've been to so many five-star hotel, but the treatment I'm getting here, na 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 na. It's not a five-star hotel treatment. <laughs> Ah, oh my god, Eric, 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 Eric. And also remembers one incident. One time came a waiter and was asking Janet, how are you doing? Is everything okay? And then Eric got so angry. Why would you ask my wife if she's okay? I'm the guy who pays all the bills. You are supposed to ask me if everything is okay, but not my wife. Janet laughed and was like, oh my god, okay. Now this is new to me. <laughs> So Janet tells us the first week she was already tired, very anxious and could count every single day. When will this guy go back to his country? I can't wait. <laughs> and that will be his last time to see me. <laughs> Another thing that Janet came to realize is that Eric hates women. Because one time they were watching sports and then they were showing women sports. Then he started saying, what the cares about women's sports and that's when she found out he's also a chauvinist so this second time janet meeting eric discovered lots of things about him also discovered he has got a drinking problem because he could start drinking from three till late at night it is wine 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 and whenever he could drink a lot could also start talking bad about his ex, that she's a bad mother, she gives everything to the kids, and also showcases that she is rich, she has got a good job, she has got the house that has sea views, takes the kids to the vacation, <laughs> drives a very big car, like showing off, you see, I'm rich, I've got money, <laughs> and also said that's why he stopped paying for the kids fee. Why should I pay? My wife is rich and earns more than I earn. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Guys, if you've been watching my videos, everything that we are hearing in this story, I've talked of this already. I told you if you're dating a guy, he talks badly about his ex. Also, he is not financially supporting his kids 
we have got a problem that guy will never be a good father to your kids the kids that you are going to have together so this guy could see his kids two times a month because the mother of the kids had a full custody so she could be like if this lady is the bad one how comes the court gave her the full custody of the kids so she could ask herself lots of questions and something was not right and also could tell janet i know janet when you find a good job you're going to be paid very well we're gonna be having lots of money we will be rich and at that time i can retire <laughs> you see <laughs> his plan to take a young ambitious lady to his country and make her work for him yes guys exactly that was his plan because guys the masters that janet wanted to go and study in the uk it was the same same masters that eric's ex-girlfriend had so he knew exactly that when janet ends her studies she's gonna find a very good job so the way Eric could treat the waiters could really hurt Janet a lot because remember they are fellow Kenyans doing their job, trying to earn a living and then you're giving them a hard time. So she could be like, maybe they're looking at me thinking I am the same. Because how can you be with a man like that? So at that time, Tos, I started taking notes and shining her eyes, like I always tell you, started taking notes <laughs> of everything. One day, they were at the beach, you know, taking a walk, and they saw there was a wedding, a very small wedding with 50 invites. When she saw the wedding, was like, wow, the wedding is so beautiful. Oh my God, I like their deco. A beach wedding, which was her dream wedding. Then Eric was like, ah, such an expensive wedding. Very, very expensive with lots of people. Because for us, our wedding, I want you, me, and your family. That's it. <laughs> so in Janet's mind was like, what? Do you think my dad will even allow that? Because my brother, when he got married, had an extravagant wedding with 500 people. And you're here saying that the wedding with barely 50 people is an expensive wedding. Then it, the reality hit her that Eric will never give her the life that she wants, the life that she deserves. Though he had promised her a beach wedding. <laughs> he could tell her we'll just get married in Norway, go to the city hall, get married, get the paper for you to be coming to visit me, for you to get the visa, just that on the paper. She was like, how will my parents feel if we get married without you going to see them? The real, real wedding will have it in Kenya at Diani Beach. But later on changed and was like, no, we can't have it at Diani Beach. We need to have this wedding at your hometown because at Diani Beach, it will be expensive. But honey, I told you about my dream wedding. Then he was like, no, 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 no. It will be too expensive to do the wedding at Diani. So at that time, knew that Eric is not her husband. Was just waiting for the time Eric to return back to Norway and end everything. So as they were returning back to the hotel from their beach walk, saw the lady with a small baby. Then he started being like, honey, look at that lady. She's so fat, so stupid. How can you go on a vacation with such a young child? Oh goodness, Janet was like, this guy is too much. One of those guys that will marry you when you have your first child, your body changes and they start to hate you. They start to tell you bad words. So their days to stay at Diani Reef came to an end and now they moved to Jacaranda. So tells us at Jacaranda, the internet was even the worst. <laughs> He could spend the whole time like curse and curse being like, I don't know why I keep coming to this part of the world. This is a banana republic. Started talking in Norwegian language, cursing. <laughs> Due to the internet is bad. And when Janet saw that, they decided to connect him on hotspot. So he could be connected on hotspot from 11 till 7 p.m. And Janet was not touching her phone and he didn't see that as a problem because he is a selfish man but she had no choice <laughs> 
had to let him be. So tells us one day he was watching the sports and then the data ended. <laughs> Janet was in the bathroom when she came out, found out that the data had ended. And it was the time whereby he was supposed to know the winner <laughs> of that sport. Oh my goodness. He got so angry, started insulting in Norwegian, went to the bathroom, started throwing things everywhere, talking in Norwegian <laughs> and laughing, saying Banana Republic, this is Banana Republic. <laughs> oh my God. Janet got scared and thought maybe he was destroying her makeup. But when she went, she found that he was throwing the towels, <laughs> the toothbrushes, <laughs> called her friend in Norway was like translate for me what this guy is saying then the friend translated was like he's calling you stupid <laughs> so when she ended the call then he came out of the bathroom and it's like he's a totally different guy not the guy that was insulting her <laughs> Give her compliments, telling her how much he loves her. <laughs> she was like, is this guy attached to the reality? Really? <laughs> I don't really understand. <laughs> right now we are laughing, but she went through a lot. And for me, I think Janet went through all that for us to learn. If you're watching this video, please never allow any guy to take advantage of you. Never allow any guy to treat you like the way Eric treated Janet. So after that incident <laughs> of the internet, the hotspot, the data to end, it was time for them to go for dinner. So they prepared and as they were walking to the gate, there were some Arabic guys there who were on their vacation. So when they saw Janet, they were like, you look beautiful. Oh my goodness, he turned to them. Then he was like, what the f did you say to my wife? <laughs> the Arabic guy started laughing and he started insulting them in Norwegian. <laughs> then he said these words in English, that fuck Arabians, dirty law life. Oh my God, this guy is a racist. Also, Janet tells us he used to call white men from Eastern Europe that they are white trash. Can you imagine? But I also talked of this. I gave you the tips and I was like, guys, if a guy is a racist towards other people, get ready. One time it's going to be your turn. So when you hear something like that from the guy that you are dating, better run so if someone is a racist to people of his own color how about you who has got a different skin color so they walked towards the gate and the gate man was taking long to open the gate he started laughing and was like and land employees everywhere oh my goodness they went for dinner and after arriving to dinner he was on the phone watching the game that he missed and found out won the guy that he wanted to win. He was super, super happy, started hugging her. I'm so happy you're my wife. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Again, Janet was like, oh my God, I'm dealing with someone with psychotic problems. <laughs> So from there, they returned to the hotel. So returning to the hotel, he wanted to keep on watching the sports. But Janet was so bored, you know, all the time she didn't have her phone. So wanted to watch a movie. Hey, guys, Eric is like, you don't respect me. But at that time, Janet decided to stand on her ground. So I was like, I want to watch a movie. <laughs> So he got so angry, so surprised that Janet responded back because he expected Janet to be keeping quiet all the time. Janet was like, I don't have energy to fight. I better shower and then have a rest. So when she went to shower, then returned, this guy started touching her, wanting the goodies. <laughs> But Janet was like, no, I don't feel like doing, not at all, not tonight. I'm so tired, I wanna have a rest. So she slept and then he came, was like, hello, hello, can you give me the hotspot? <laughs> and then do the 
work that you want to do, then Janet had to put the hotspot for two hours <laughs> and knew from the chase those two hours, she would be deeply asleep. So guys, Thursday came and on Friday, they were supposed to go for safari according to the plans. So around four, they were at the balcony, you know, taking some wine, enjoying time. <laughs> then Eric tells her, tomorrow we are going to Nairobi at your place. Janet is like, what? Why did you come to that decision? He said, I've spent lots of money to these two hotels. It has been super expensive for me so that's why we are to go to your place janet told him my sister lynette is still at my place then he's like i thought she was done with the exams she told him yes she's done with the exams but still she needs to do the attachments so that is why she's still there he told her tell lynette to get the hell out of there so that we can come can you imagine? This guy is asking her to chase her sister away. <laughs> One day shall never end. We can't go to my place, then he gets angry. How can I do the booking now? It's so late. But eventually he was like, okay, we are going to go to the countryside of Nairobi. So yes, that evening tells her is taking her to her favorite restaurant. They're going to be eating shrimps, lobster, taking champagne. <laughs> yeah, they go to that restaurant. They even know them, welcome them well. They eat, enjoy. Now it is time to return to the hotel. So they talked and they were like, the bookings of the B&B, they are going to do it in the morning. They decided to pass at the reception so that they can ask on how they are going to reach to the airport that morning because their flight was seven in the morning. So arriving at the reception, finds the guy and then he tells the guy that he wants Uber, which will take them from Diani to Mombasa airport. <laughs> then this guy tells Eric, for, for us here, we don't have Uber, but we can organize a taxi for you, which will take you to the airport. But if you want the Uber, you can just go on the app on your phone and call for Uber. <laughs> but I know with these Ubers, it is really, really hard to find them early in the morning at the time you want to go and eric gets super super angry at the guy starts telling him are you a idiot what am i saying do you think if i wanted an uber i could have called an uber the guy told him there is a difference with uber and taxi but for him he kept on insisting telling the guy that he wants uber the guy told him we have taxis <laughs> so when janet saw all that misunderstanding took his hand and was trying to explain to him what the guy is trying to say. Guess what he did? He pushed her and was like, honey, never ever try to interrupt me. It's so rude. <laughs> ah, this girl suffered a lot. So he kept telling the guy, do you know who the f I am? I've been a pilot. I've been to 50 countries in the world. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. But the guy kept on like explaining. And in the end, he was like, okay, how much is the taxi? The guy told him it's $70. God, hey, he started again. On the app, I saw it is only 500 Kenyan shillings. <laughs> Why are you telling me $70? The guy told him, I've said that is the price for Uber, not the taxi. So Janet again had to intervene and told Eric, let's ask for a discount. He was like, no, we are going to talk to the taxi guy in the morning and again. But guys, Janet felt really, really bad being pushed by Eric and turning around, didn't see where Eric was. And he had the keys for the room. She looked for him, but never found him. Decided to go to the beach and take the ocean breeze while waiting so she stayed at the beach and it was super cold 
because she had an open dress, decided to return back and look again for him. Then found him, he kept on complaining, honey, I didn't like how you acted, you're supposed to be on my side. She tried to explain, then he started shouting again. Janet was like, no, today I'm packing my things, I'm leaving you. This is not the kind of marriage that I imagined. Then he was like, good luck. So they slept, she woke up early in the morning, prepared everything, packed it all. When he woke up, he was super sweet <laughs> with her telling her I love you so much, took her hand, went to the beach and was like, we created very good memories here. This is forever. This is our forever place. Oh my God. <laughs> Then the taxi came, took them, entered in the taxi. He was holding her hand. You know, I think he was feeling so guilty and scared that and Janet is gonna leave him. So they left, went to Nairobi and they were supposed to stay for another one week and then him returned to Norway. In Nairobi tells us it was really, really worse. Because she could stay with Eric 24 seven, not like the way they were at the because she could distract herself, maybe go to the beach, take a walk. There, they could be inside the house together <laughs> all the time. And he kept on like getting angry every second minute. One time they went for shopping and then when she was packing things in the fridge, packed cheese in a different place goodness <laughs> this guy was like you never pay attention you're like a child how can you put cheese here then janet was like yes of course i'm a child have you seen our age gap <laughs> and guys another thing is that eric was not 46 she came to find out that eric was 57 can you imagine guys so he lied to her all along so at first when he came he could pretend to be nice to people but this time the second time he could fight with everyone even with the cashiers <laughs> at the supermarket <laughs> he could fight with them janet kept on feeling really bad and she fell out of love tells us it reached a point she could feel even embarrassed to walk with him because love was no longer there. And one thing Janet is very thankful to God is not to take Eric to the parents because she was like, what if I could have taken him there? Then they tell him the bride price. <laughs> he stands up very angry and starts saying it's expensive. He can't pay. Embarrass her in front of her parents. <laughs> it was going to be really, really bad. And also thinks that God was trying to tell her, I let you wait to know who this guy is. So in Nairobi, all the time he could stay on his phone and one time so that he was still on online dating apps. And also in February, she had seen something like that and was like, maybe I am crazy. But this guy all along the whole relationship, he was still on online dating apps. So the whole stress of feeling like she's walking on the eggshells, the anxiety, she lost four kgs. Can you imagine in that period of time when Eric was around. So time for Eric to return back to Norway came. Janet was so happy, couldn't wait because she was feeling very, very tired and without energy. So he returned back home. That is when Janet contacted me again after a long period of time. Because the last time me hearing Janet, it was when she got engaged at first. I think that was February. So when she returned to me, wrote me on Instagram and told me of what was going on and how she feels. So she wanted some advice from me. Bella, what can I do? Because right now I'm really, really tired. So what I did, I told her, Janet, 
I know it's gonna be really difficult for you because I know guys when you are in a relationship it has been long yes they went through lots of problems yes she suffered but again she remembers the good times and be like let me hold on so it's like a tree grows roots <laughs> so I was like you have to uproot those roots you have to be determined and forget everything about this guy leave him you need peace of mind you need to be happy if you're with a guy you feel anxious all the time you feel tired that's a toxic guy so better leave him no matter what you went through the good times forget about them so she was like thank you so much bella i'm happy for what you have advised me because i had thought of it so she had to write a message to eric for the breakup <laughs> Guys, what happened is gonna shock you. His response. This guy has no shame. Told Janet, if everything is over, then I need my ring. You have to send me that ring from Kenya to Norway. I want it. It's so expensive. I've spent lots of money on you. Started mentioning everything that he had ever spent on her. So all this while, it was all about money. That is why, guys, you shouldn't be deceived by a guy who has money and you'll be like, I'm dating a rich guy. <laughs> If your relationship is only based on money in this guy's mind, if anything happens, it's over, you have to separate or divorce, he's going to take everything that he has ever given you. You will remain with nothing. So, dear beautiful ladies, be very, very careful. Shine your eyes. So guys, about returning the ring back to him, I told her, do not return that ring. Block the guy. And that is what she did. <laughs> because you can't waste my time, take my goodies, <laughs> embarrass me, make me live with stress, anxiety, and then give you back the ring. <laughs> you give me the ring, it's mine, end of the story <laughs> yeah. so to the app where janet met eric janet met eric on bumble and she never paid any money on bumble to chat with men so quickly to her advice this has been long but i have to end it so her advice number one never ignore any red flag even if it is small don't ignore it and if you see any red flags in a guy that you are dating don't wait for that red flag to turn to yellow because it will keep on turning to redder 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 never will it turn to yellow so keep that in mind because for her she even blames herself that at the time eric was like i hate hate it when people ask me for money could have ended the relationship that same same day advice number two always listen to the god feeling the woman's intuition when you feel your body is trying to tell you you are tired you're so anxious just know that you are with the wrong person don't keep on pushing your body her advice number three you don't know anyone until you meet them in person so don't start chatting with people and you start trusting them a hundred percent get to see them get to know who they are see how they interact with other people if they interact badly just know that your turn will come her advice number four when you see a guy rushing to get you committed to get married to you to engage you to tell you that i love you you just know that he is doing all that so that you don't discover who truly they are so he gets you committed and that's when you discover who they are so always take your time so imagine if janet went to norway got married to him what could have happened to her the worst guys tells us can even imagine the worst like a guy refusing to give you the divorce or taking your passport 
oh my goodness really we thank god she did not get that visa number five tells you it's not too late if he is not good for you doesn't mean you'll never find anyone to love you you'll never find anyone who will treat you right of course you will redirection and rejection is always a way of upgrading <laughs> and getting something better number six if you're chatting with a muzungu a white guy he has been to your country so many times that's a red flag <laughs> Because they know how to play games, they've got a blueprint. Be very, very careful. Because Eric used to take Janet around. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the places that Janet has never been and she's Kenyan. <laughs> so this guy knew very, very well about Kenya. And there is no way Eric never dated a Kenyan lady. Even that ring that he is asking to be given back maybe he engaged another kenyan lady who knows and took the ring then engaged janet because the ring was big <laughs> what is the explanation to that <laughs> and at the time he was returning back to his country he was complaining a lot about money that i've spent lots of money since i met you i haven't managed to save i have to go back home thinking of how I am going to start saving. But again, interracial relationships, I told you, they are expensive. You have to travel, you have to stay in the hotels. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of costs to incur. When you are in an interracial relationship and there is nothing to do about it, it is the way it is. <laughs> Her advice number seven, I've talked of this already. When you see a guy is uttering out racist words, you just know that one time he's going to be a racist to you. Because this guy was talking so bad about Africa, saying that it could have been better if it remained under colonialism of the white guys. Meaning Africans are incapable of doing anything and they don't have any resources which is very, very bad. At the same time, you are dating an African lady. This guy was so insensitive. So when you hear a guy talking like that, one day he's gonna be talking bad about you. And it happened to Janet, cause one day they were watching a movie and then her hair was, <laughs> you know, going up. Then he's like, what is wrong with your hair? <laughs> She told him that is how African hair is. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so be very, very careful, guys. Any racist word, run. He's not for you, even if you want a white guy. So dear friends, we have reached an end of our today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You learned lots of things. Please, if you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super, super good. Comment below what you think about this video. Until next time, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.